Coming up in less than 30 minutes in headline news, an op man was killed in a weekend traffic accident. The investigation into a Coffee County murder on Friday continues this week, and we'll also take some time out to reflect on Mother's Day. We hope you stay with us. Again, my father's on the show with a cooking segment when we come back, so stay with us. Well, you know, in May, we always have a feature with visiting chefs. And one day, Tom and I were talking, and I discovered that his dad is quite a chef. Tom Neville, of course, is with us here at uh, WTVY and has been for a, a good while now. And I don't know whether Tom cooks or not. Do you cook, Tom? More of an eater than a cooker. Mm -hmm. but there's a few dishes I can cook, but nothing out of the ordinary. Well, when did you discover that your dad was a great cook? Uh, I guess growing up, my mother was a good southern recipe cooker, and... Uh, Dad went overseas several times in his military service, and through that, I guess he picked up a few recipes overseas. And uh, so we've always been fortunate to have two different types of uh, gourmet cooks in the house, I guess. So you could bring somebody home and say, well, Dad's cooking tonight or Mom's cooking tonight. I'd like to introduce Tom's father, Rudy Neville. And Rudy, thank you for coming in and doing a recipe for us today. I just hope it turns out all right. Oh, listen, we'll eat anything, <laughs> but I'm sure that it will. Now, you viewers out there can get the recipe by sending us a self-addressed stamped envelope in just a few minutes. But first of all, this is an adopted or an adapted recipe. Tom, tell us what kind of recipe we'll have today. Okay, I took a Chinese recipe, which is chicken with uh, ginger and scallion sauce which traditionally is made with the whole chicken skin and everything and it's cooked and then uh, the chicken is cut and reassembled on the, uh, on the plate. But with our concern for cholesterol and high fat contact and so forth, I went ahead and uh, I take the skin off the chicken and debone it and then cut the meat into bite-sized pieces and go on from there. Mm-hmm. Well, that looks great. Now, we're going to have this recipe, as we said. All right, you need a wok, and this is an uh, electric wok, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Actually, you don't need a wok. You can use a frying pan. You can use anything. The only heating I'm going to do is uh, with the oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do that in a frying pan. You can do it in the microwave. And as I said earlier, I'm going to modify it. Press lighter. Okay, I think lighter. Okay, I think even Tom can learn how to do this. Sure. So, it sounds simple. We have it, to is wait simple. <laughs> it is simple. It is simple. Oh, that's great. So we did go ahead and prepare the chicken. All right, what? where do we start? Okay, I've already got somewhere around here the chicken I cooked at home. This is a dish that can be served uh, at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So the chicken's already been cooked mm. and deboned, skin taken off, cut up. Uh, one of the secrets to this recipe is that the chicken only cooks for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think you have to cook chicken, you know, for an hour or two. You get your water boiling with your different seasonings and so that are in the recipe. Put your chickens in there. About 15 minutes later, roll them over so that all sides get exposed to the uh, simmering water. And uh, then after 30 minutes, you just turn the heat off and let them cool down in the broth. Mm -hmm. for about an hour. Then go ahead and strain your broth, save that for soup, makes great soup, and then go ahead and let your chickens cool down so you can handle them. And then you can take the skin off, take the meat off the bones, throw all that to the wild animals, mm -hmm. and uh, hold your chicken. And like I said, it can be served at room temperature, so it's an ideal dish for someone who's busy mm -hmm. and can have this ready to go. And you'll see when we get started here that once this part's done, the rest of it takes just a couple of minutes. Oh, sounds okay. great. So okay, I'll go ahead and got some onions or scallions there. Right. And now I know that a lot of people have paring knives at home, but this is probably my favorite knife, and I have no trouble holding it. It's very important that it. your knives are very sharp, too, because a, a sharp. dull knife can cut you more than a sharp one. That's right. The most dangerous thing in the kitchen is a dull knife. Okay, the recipe calls for about a tablespoon of minced fresh ginger and a clove of garlic. Mm-hmm, you can see he knows what he's doing there. Ah, uh, didn't work. Naturally, since I said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it should pop right out. There we go. Okay. Mmm, nice smell of garlic. I love garlic. Mm-hmm. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the oil in here and get it started to heat. You have a special kind of oil that you use? Okay, what you use is uh, two tablespoons of uh, corn oil, peanut oil, and then two tablespoons of toasted sesame oil. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't want to go to the grocery store and get refined sesame oil. Generally, you'll find this at a uh, Oriental market, and you can tell because it's a dark color. And then when you open it up, of course, it has that toasted sesame aroma, which is... So you do about two and two, then? Yeah. And this is also one of those nice things that, uh, you know, 
you can change it anyway. Like, for instance, you don't like the taste of garlic. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can't believe anybody wouldn't like garlic. But anyway, if you don't like the taste of garlic, leave it out. Mm -hmm. If you like more ginger, more ginger. You know, so you can change it to and what. If you just don't happen to have that ingredient in your kitchen that day, try yeah. something else. Do you grow those in your backyard, or do you have to guess them at the curb market? Well, I do. Gardener? I am a gardener, and I do have a nice crop of uh, green onions growing. But uh, at this time of the year, scallions are so inexpensive at the market that we went ahead and, and bought these. Okay, I don't want to splatter this on you. Mmm, it's going to be nice and yummy. We have a whole bunch of professional tasters out here. That's part of their <laughs> well, profession here. That they I was telling Thomas earlier that I understand Mr. Woods has promised the crew good food or pay. <laughs> and so... Uh, <laughs> we do get food, definitely. <laughs> One of our few friends benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, we eat a lot out here. Let's see what people are cooking on the show. Whoa. And Tom, you used to, before you started doing the morning show with us, uh, you didn't always get in on this because you were out in that's the field right, yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the benefits of working at the at the home office. You get to participate in everybody's activities. Tell us, Dad, how you uh, once you skin the chicken, how do you go about deboning it? Is that a hard process? Not at all. Once it's easy to uh, handle, or once it's cooled down some, uh, it uh, the meat just pulls off the bone very easily. That's another nice thing about. Uh, cooking it only for 30 minutes and then letting it rest in the broth, the chicken stays very moist. And uh, and if you cook it too long, then of course you know, it kind of dries up mm -hmm. and sticks to the bone harder. So this... Uh, and of course this recipe tells you all the seasoning you need to put in there. And we do have it quite lengthy. In fact, we have already decorated it a little bit. We have <laughs> our own little ginger sauce on it, I believe. Yeah. But uh, that's part of it. This will show you it's from an excellent cook. You know, if you get a cookbook in somebody's kitchen and they don't have a splattered goodies on it, they've never used They're it. They're not using probably. it, that's right. Mm -hmm. How long, if you started from scratch, about how long would it take to, pre to uh, prepare the whole meal? Okay, total time. Just, uh, when you cook, the chicken, just, uh, when you cook the chicken the day before and have it ready that afternoon when you come in and... Sure. Tom, I believe you and I can do that. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I was telling the wife the other day, the nice thing about, call it ethnic cooking, is if you make a mistake, most people don't know. They wouldn't know. <laughs> it tastes awful. Now, no, when it's you supposed have to taste that way. <laughs> country cornbread, corn cones, fried, co uh, fried um, cornbread, or fried chicken, or you, you know. And people know what that's them. supposed to taste that's like. That's right. That's right, You yeah. can tell it's messed up bad if it is. Okay, the oil's hot. Oil's hot. And, and you mentioned something about doing it in the microwave, so actually you could uh, stir-fry those sort of in the microwave if you wanted to, sure. with a microwave-safe dish. And the thing is now, we're not really cooking these vegetables. We're taking the essence, if you will, mm -hmm. of the scallions, ginger, and garlic, and imparting that to the oil, okay? And this is another modification. Normally, you take this and pour it over the chicken, but I'm going to go ahead and stir that in. And mm -hmm. stir that in. Okay. Well, my favorite travels quite a bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, one thing a lot of people don't realize is not only Chinese, but you get down in Indonesia, Singapore, and uh, Southeast Asia, and uh, a lot of people talk about hot chili, Mexican hot chili, Texas hot chili, and so forth. That's not hot. You eat Thai food or Indonesian food, I mean, they've got peppers there just blow the top of your head off. In other words, what we've been <laughs> eating is not hot. Huh? Not hot. Mild. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I turned the heat off. As soon as I put that chicken in there, I turned the heat off. And I'll just... Now, would you then... You would just pour that into your serving, your serving bowl and then have your rice separate and then let them dish that onto their plate. Right, you can have the rice and then, you know, eat the chicken, bite of rice and so forth. That way, if you have leftovers, you can store it separately and... Exactly. Okay. I don't think any of this will be left over. I don't think I'm so. Certainly sure. <laughs> Now, this is a chicken with ginger and scallion sauce. It is modified, made it, making it a little bit more American, perhaps. But if you would like this recipe, we invite you to send us a self-addressed stamped envelope. Just ask for Rudy's recipe if you want to, or uh, the chicken, the wok recipe, whatever you want to call it, or Tom's dad's recipe, and write to the morning show, P.O. Box 1089, Dothan, Alabama, 36302. Ooh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> now we'll all have a party. Rudy, we hope you'll come back and visit us again real soon. Well, I look forward to it. I enjoy this sort of thing, and uh, in time, Thomas will 
pick up a few tips. Maybe eventually I'll have my own cooking segment on the program. <laughs> okay, if I, why not? This if will I will pick be up all these good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll eat every day on the morning show. Now we're going to take a break and there's more to come right after this.